first of all, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. I'm um, on the other side of the world from you. I'm down in New Zealand. It's tomorrow, and I can tell you the future's bright. I've been very lucky to have been to New Zealand a few times, uh, all for work, and I absolutely love it there. That country is amazing, and what people don't realize is how good the dairy products are. That's very true. The cheese? Oh, man. We drove, I guess, maybe two hours outside of Auckland just to go to a dairy to have their cheese, and it was well worth the trip. And the ice cream there is outrageous. Yeah, there's a place called Duck Island. And unfortunately, my son, who's, he's four, um, knows exactly where it is on the street. So every time we're walking past or driving past, Daddy, 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 Duck Island! <laughs> they learn at a young age what sugar really is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Um, all right, so I'm totally going to, uh, uh, let's jump into some other things, but I totally want to talk to you about why you're in New Zealand, but that's for later in the conversation. Um, uh, do you think that you tweet too much? Do I tweet too much? Yeah, I'm being sarcastic. I know you, you tweet <laughs> like once a year. I mean, I, it, it, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm learning how kind of powerful Twitter is. And frankly, it just scares me. My wife is much better at it than I am and she's got more experience doing it. Um, but no, I, I, I rarely tweet. It's usually, if I do, it's to support somebody else. <laughs> I don't, I, I struggle with self-promotion. Uh, I understand you're not, you're not alone in this. Uh, what TV series would you love to guest star on? Ooh. Mm. I really loved The Blacklist. <laughs> sure. James Spader's great. I got to do one of them. Jessica Jones was always kind of a dream for me to kind of be, be part of that Marvel universe. And uh, Kristen Ritter is uh, remarkable and incredibly kind and generous as a person. And I, I mean, I, I got to do it, I, I think. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, no, I, I, uh, I actually really enjoyed Jessica Jones and I believe you were on season three, yeah. I think. Yeah. What might surprise fans of that series to learn about the making of that show? Um, how collaborative it is and how it felt like being on an indie film set. You know, it, you assume because it's Marvel, there, there's this huge overseeing puppeteer's hand and it's really not. Um, everybody is allowed to collaborate. I mean, Kristen even uh, directed an episode and um, you, any idea is going to be heard. It may be a bad idea and you don't do it, but um, it really felt like a real collaboration between creative people that all love the same thing. You have done a lot of theater work. Yeah. I am curious which theater has been the, your favorite place that you've performed in and which theater is your favorite to watch something in? Um, I got to do Hair in the Hollywood Bowl. Um, that was bucket list level of, um, there was a moment I'm, I think I was running around in tennis shoes and a loincloth <laughs> and <laughs> singing. And uh, you're looking out at this vast field of people in this iconic Los Angeles spot it, that was pretty remarkable um i really like watching theater um there's a theater in london called the almeida in islington in london and they do some really smart and provocative work it's where um american psycho the musical began um and uh it's, i think it's like 300 400 seats and it's just intimate well laid out and you are just immersed in a story, and I really like going there. I could be wrong about this, but I read that you were going to play a Beast in X-Men First Class, but ended up not doing it to do a play or a musical. Am I wrong about this? Is this completely off? No, I, it's more complicated than that, but the, it kind of boiled down to we... Um, I'd started this musical about Andrew Jackson, and we had done it in a small theater and then a little big theater, a little bit bigger. And then we did it in LA and it took almost four or five years to build it. And we were actually gonna be able to take it to Broadway. And um, 
that it just seemed a real shame to not do that. Um, the, they were all my friends and uh, people I collaborated with for a long period of time. And um, that's what I really kind of had to do. Was it on you to decide what you wanted to do? Um, that's a long time ago. I, I would love to say, I chose my art. Um, but it was more complicated than that. I'll, I'll leave it be. Um, jumping into why I actually get to talk to you today. I'm a big Liam Neeson fan, and I love watching him punch people in the face. I just do. Yeah, sure. and, and, and I'm not alone. He's All of his action movies, he punches people in the face, and fans love it. Why do people love watching him kick ass? Is there something about Liam? Yes, there is. And I learned it working with him on this. It's that you can, a lot of movies have action in them. But what was the most interesting part about doing action with him was that he approached it as an opportunity for storytelling. Why is he punching this way in this moment, in this story? Um, it's not as if the narrative of a thriller stops, action happens, and then the narrative picks up. We have to learn something about who's throwing the punch, who's getting punched, and he really kind of ingrained that in me, that these are opportunities for storytelling. What is it about them that makes them fight this way? I, I Listen, uh, getting to work with Liam Neeson, getting to be in a movie with Lawrence Fishburne, uh, this is very cool. So I am curious, uh, how much did you pay to be in the movie? <laughs> I know. I think um, if it weren't so damn cold, I would have done it for free. Right. I did hear that it was a, a cold shoot. Oh, it was uh, ridiculous. But because we were actually driving uh, semis on frozen lakes, I appreciated that it was cold. Yeah, Liam told me that he actually jumped in the water. There was a few yeah. takes where he went in the water to like do his thing and then he got, you know, warmed up. And I'm like, I didn't say it to him, but I'm like, you're kind of, you're, you're an older gentleman. I'm like, you, you have some balls. Like, I, I don't Why know. Why are you doing that? <laughs> I'm like, I couldn't believe it. Were you there when he was doing that or you just heard about it? Oh, no. I was standing right next to him going, no, not for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> because they give you a safety briefing and the water's so cold. The, the biggest problem you're gonna have is initially you get in the water and you're, you can't breathe, it's so cold. Your lungs shut down. You have to kind of calm yourself down and get yourself acclimated to the water. But um, that day, I think it was minus 38. And he brought up a, a really good point is that once he'd been in the water for a bit, um, we're all standing in the freezing wind and sleet and snow and um, he said, actually, it's a little bit warmer in the water because, you know, it's not frozen. That's actually something I didn't think about. But yeah, it's, it's probably, yeah, like 60 degrees warmer. The joke's on us. We should have been in the water. We would have been fine. Until you get out of the water and then you're regretting life. Um, yeah. I love learning about the behind the scenes of the making of a movie. So what might surprise people to learn about the making of um, The Ice Road? Well, there's a lot of good CG out there now. Um, and there's a little bit in our movie, but a lot of it was practical. We were actually on trucks, on frozen lakes. We were running and fighting on frozen lakes. Um, and that lends itself to, to this expanse of the movie. Um, you really feel like nature is a character in the film. Uh, it actually looks it when you're when you're watching the movie. Yeah. You know, it, it also I didn't know anything about the ice road uh, prior to watching this movie. And I'm like, oh, this is actually a very dangerous thing, especially with global warming. <laughs> yeah. People do this. Yeah. Like I'm like, I don't know if I could do this because that I mean, you're literally taking your life in your hands. Yeah. The, our safety briefing was if the truck starts to go in, open the window. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, because if you get submerged with the window shut, then the pressure of the water inhibits your ability to open the door and get out. So you'll just be sucked down with the truck. So they gave us these like glass breakers if, if you couldn't get it open in time. That's an intense shoot. It was. Don't, don't get me wrong. They, our safety team was incredible. There was never a, a point where I felt uh, fear for my life. Maybe the tips of my nose and fingertips because it was cold. But 
Um, but yeah, it was, it, that's one of the joys of the job is you get to experience extremes and different environments and different uh, ways of life. Uh, before I run out of time with you, uh, obviously like every, as you can tell by the things behind me, I'm interested in certain things. Uh, obviously you are uh, part of the huge Amazon series, Lord of the Rings. Um, uh, what was it like? Did you go after that role? Did they ask you? How did, how did it come happen for you? Well, um, it was a long audition process. And then I kind of didn't hear from them for a few months. I mean, the, the whole world was struggling to figure out what we were going to do next at that point. And then one of the showrunners, uh, JD, um, called me and he pitched the part and, and pitched the commitment, which is large. And um, I could hear on the phone that there was a, a PA system and a lot of noise in the background. And uh, I still wasn't sure. And I said, JD, where, where are you? He said, I'm in the hospital. I said, what, are you okay? He said, no, my wife's having a baby. <laughs> and he's calling me to, to pitch a job to me. <laughs> and um, while he's having a kid and I just thought, well, uh, he's got the level of commitment you're going to need to get this show to be where it should be. Um, it would be a huge mistake to not uh, take part. I am so looking forward to this series. And everyone has heard that Amazon is investing a ton of money to make this the best it could possibly be. Um, as someone who is obviously working on it on the inside, does it feel that way as you're filming that you guys are making something huge? Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of a talk about the money, but I, I kind of feel like that's what you need to do it right. Um, it's like if you, you found someone you're in love with, you want to buy them a ring, you're going to do the best you can to show that you're committed to it. And um, it's not unlike that. Th this is not a, a legendarium that you want to skimp on. Oh, no, 100%. Also, the, the world is going to tune in for this thing. This is like, a, I mean, this is something that a lot of people, um, well, anyway, enough about that. I know I don't want to get you in any trouble, but what can you actually say about your character in, in the series? Or are you sort of on like full lockdown with that kind of information? The green light on my Zoom call just started to throb. <laughs> They're listening. <laughs> um, I, I really can't say a lot. And, and here's the thing. It's usually annoying when they tell you not to talk about it. You know, here's what you can't say. Here's what you can't say. And um, on this one, I kind of agree with them there because there's so much attention and because so much happens, um, it's important that we do protect it. So I really can't say a lot other than you will be glad you knew so little when you see it. Yeah, I actually am one of those people that I don't want to know spoilers before I see it. I want to be surprised every week. I'm, I'm completely yeah. on board with the with that. But at the same time, for you as an as an actor, look, I, I know I love New Zealand and I would love to spend time down there. Is it was it a little bit, um, you know, because, again, I don't know if you you might last a season, you might last all five seasons. I, I don't know what your thing is, but is it weird to sign on to something that could be um, multiple years? Yes, <laughs> that is weird. Um, but again, with Tolkien, I, I mean, I was a huge fan as a kid and, and, um, as, and still am as an adult. And uh, it was kind of one of those where the, if you say no, you might regret it for the rest of your life. It comes out and you go, I could have been doing that. Right. No, no, completely. Um, well, I will say, because uh, I'm just about out of time. Are you, are you done soon? Are you leaving? Like, uh, is this one going to be something that are you are there for like, uh, you know, for the rest of the year? Like, how, how does it work in terms of what you get to do with other projects? Oh, you're asking all the right questions, none of which I have answers to. It, it is a bit uh, nebulous at this point. Um, uh, we've been here a long time and they'll let us go when they're done with us. <laughs> it's kind of like that. <laughs> I, 
Well, I heard you guys are filming two seasons, like the first 20 episodes or something, uh, which is, um, it's a lot. You know more than I do. That, that's, I'm pretty confident. Um, listen, I got to stop there. And I'm just going to okay. say, uh, sincerely, I wish you nothing but the best. And I'm super happy for you that you get to be part of Lord of the Rings because I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Enjoy New Zealand and have some ice cream that I can't have. Yeah, Duck Island. Yeah, for real. I'll remember that. Hey, have a great day, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you again.